Fabricadabra at LPL presents Beanbag Doorstop. Some things you'll need are a quarter yard of medium weight fabric like upholstery fabric, a coordinating thread, and then some kind of filler. Now fillers can include beans and rice, polyfill, poly pellets, glass decorative gems, even pebbles and scrap fabric and newspaper and plastic bags. You just wanna make sure that it has enough weight to it to hold a door open. So that's why I include some of the heavier things like the beans and the pebbles and the gems in the filler. A few other things you'll need are a scissors and ruler, a hand sewing needle and or a, hand, uh, a sewing machine, pins, and an iron. Let's begin. First, we're going to need to cut two seven by seven inch squares out of our fabric. We're gonna place those two squares right sides facing each other in the middle. So the, the inside part of the fabric, that's gonna be the bean bag, it should be on the outside. You're going to pin those together just like this, except for one side. One side we're gonna leave open. So next we're going to begin sewing. You're just gonna use a regular stitch and we're gonna use a quarter inch seam. Okay, sometimes it can be a little hard to get it right where you want it. You wanna start on the edge and then you, when you begin your stitching, here we go, a little bit closer, we're going to start the stitch and then we're gonna go backwards. I'm pressing the backwards button. And then we're gonna go forward and pull our pin. We don't wanna sew over the pin as that could damage your machine or your needle. And then you're gonna keep going until you get to another pin and pull that out. Whoops, made a little mistake there. Got it back on track, totally fine. Okay, now as we approach the end, we don't wanna have to stop and then re-thread everything. So what we're going to do is put our needle down inside the fabric and then we're gonna turn it, we're gonna pivot it so that we could just keep sewing. And that's what I'm doing here. I pulled my pin out and I'm gonna continue sewing the quarter inch um, or so seam allowance. So come up on a pin, you're gonna pull the pin out and then you're gonna keep going forward until you get to the next corner. And then we're gonna pivot again. Okay, here we go. And we're gonna get close to that edge. We wanna, remember, we're, we're trying to get it a quarter inch. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, sew down again. Okay, don't forget, remove your pen as you're sewing before you get to it so that you don't damage your needle or your machine. And here we go, we're coming up on the last, now this was the last edge we're gonna sew, so we're gonna do the reverse button so that we can sew backwards. And that locks the stitch in place so that it doesn't pull apart. So here you'll see that I have uh, pressed down the seams. You can do that or you can just cut them uh, very short. Uh, the other thing that you do need to do, which I'm not showing you, is to clip the um, corners uh, all the way around the square. And that's gonna make it easier when you're turning this thing inside out. Now we're going to take the square that we've sewn together and we're going to open it up a little bit. And then we're going to put the two seams on each side, the left and the right, together so that they meet in the middle. And then you're gonna turn the whole thing. And this is gonna give you kind of a pyramid shape for the bean bag. Okay, so now we're gonna pin this together because we're gonna be sewing this, but we're not gonna sew this entire edge. We're going to leave about a two to three inch gap 
so that we can fill the bean bag and so that um, and then we'll we'll hand sew that gap closed after we've done that so here I am I'm I'm basically decided one side of the seam I'm going to sew shut and the other side I'm basically going to kind of leave open I'm going to sew it just a little bit um, and here I'm showing you you know that whole length is about three inches. I'm gonna do about two to uh, two and a half inches. But I like to do a little bit of that corner edge first on the machine. So I'm gonna put a pin in place where I want my gap to start. And then I'm gonna put another pin where I want my gap to finish. Okay, so here we're going to uh, start sewing. So we're gonna sew that little bit right there and then leave a gap and then sew the rest of it. And so I'm gonna start off, uh, again, it's gonna be a quarter, uh, quarter inch allowance. And of course you always wanna start off with a few stitches forward, then a few stitches back and then go forward again and then I'm going to be stopping right about there so I'm going to put a nut I'm going to close it again by doing reverse stitches okay we're going to lift our presser foot and then we're just going to pull it we're going to leave it attached the thread attached and we're going to pull it across to where we want to start our stitches again and you can tell I've already actually stitched this but I for, I <laughs> accidentally didn't record it so <laughs> so sorry I'm I'm basically restitching it over where I stitched it before. So when you do your starting stitch, of course you wanna do some front stitches first, then a few back stitches, and then you're gonna stitch all the way straight through towards the end, where you're gonna go forward all the way and then do some back stitches and go forward again. So now we are going to turn this baby inside out, okay? And that's what it's called, turning it out. Um, so we want that inside portion to be on the outside and the outside portion to be on the inside. And so what I do first is I put my fingers through the gap. And again, you may want to have go out, gone with a three inch gap instead of the two inch gap, um, cause this was a little hard for me. Um, and you're going to start pulling the fabric out, basically inside out, or in this case, right side out. Okay, and so just keep working at it. It's gonna be a little hard. You're gonna think, oh my God, I'm gonna rip my seams or, or, or something like that. You're not. Just, um, just keep plugging away at it, pulling it from different angles. As you can see, I'm doing here. And um, yeah, keep, just keep pulling it. And once you get it um, all the way turned inside out, then you're gonna wanna um, poke out the corners with something long with a kind of pointed end. Um, you wanna grab something like the back end of a skinny paintbrush or a maybe a wooden skewer, something like that. Something with kind of a pointed end but not enough to poke through the fabric. And then you're just basically gonna put it in through the gap and push it into the corners um, as far as you can so that you can pop those corners out and make them a little bit sharper. Okay, so there's one corner. And you can see here, I finished all the corners and now I've got my little pyramid shape. And the next step will be to fill that pyramid with a uh, filler of some kind. Again, you want something with a little weight to it. So you don't wanna just use cotton or fabric scraps. You wanna use something that's weightier because this is in fact a doorstop although you could use it just as a decoration. And here we go, we're going to fill it. Uh, so you'll need a funnel of some kind. I've made my own funnel. Um, so there's my gap. That's what we're gonna be putting things in. Okay, and then I have my funnel. I made this one out of construction paper and tape. And, uh, you know, you wanna to have a large enough hole at the end but it can't be too large that it doesn't fit in the gap. So that's what I've done here. Just a very simple technique I used. And now I'm actually filling mine mostly with rice because uh, I had this huge jar of uncooked rice. So 
that I had used for other crafts, and so I couldn't use it for cooking. Anywho, I, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put the funnel in, and then I'm gonna just going to start scooping with my hand. You could use a measuring cup or something like that to, uh, to pour the, the rice in through there. And you can do that with beans, you could do that with poly pellets, uh, whatever you want. Okay, so it gives it some nice weight. And then I'm gonna fill it further up, and then uh, for the final little bit, I decided I didn't want the hassle of having, having rice going all the way to that top tip. So I decided to fill the rest of it with uh, some felt scraps that I had lying around, and a little bit of cotton or polyfill, as it's called, because it's not really cotton. It's usually polyester. So here you go. And you know, you can just use your finger for this. There's no reason to have to um, use the funnel. And then finally, just a little bit of cotton. Uh, and that's just to help the tip, you know, stay up, basically, up and pointy. Okay, so once you do that, you want to kind of fold your, make sure that you fold the, the lips of the gap in because we're going to sew, hand sew that closed. You could maybe fit it on a sewing machine. Okay, now that we're done with that, and I'm just going to kind of zhuzh it a little bit. Okay, so this is where we're going to sew our uh, gap closed. So this is how you thread your needle. I just thought I'd show you this real quick as I'm doing it a little bit differently than I normally do when I thread a needle. So I'm taking my thread and I put it through the eye and then I'm actually gonna pull it so that it's in half on each side of the needle, um, the eye of the needle. And then I'm going to uh, tie a knot between the two sides. And in fact, I actually end up tying two knots So, and you know, you just take to the sides, just like you're tying your shoes maybe, except don't do the loops. <laughs> just do the knot part. Okay, and then I'm gonna take that knotted end and I'm gonna wrap it around my finger several times. And then I'm gonna kind of pull, oh, I had a little trouble there. I'm gonna pull it off and kind of smush it around with my fingers and that usually knots it up really well. And so it makes a much larger knot so it doesn't pull through the fabric. And uh, and there you go. See, that's my larger knot. It's messy, but we're actually gonna put this on the inside of the gap um, so that it doesn't show. So get a little bit closer angle so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna be using um, a very simple sort of a whip stitch to close this down. Uh, there's other kind of stitches you can use, but this is just easy. Um, so I'm gonna go in from the inside of the fabric, okay? And that way my knot is hidden inside the bean bag, the bean bag's doorstop. Okay, and so making sure everything, the, you know, the lip of the gap is, is pressed in or folded in. Okay, so I turn it in a little bit, and then I'm going to just start making stitches between the two sides. So here I go. I do it close to the edge of, of, the, um, of the gap. Okay, you know, just pull it all the way through. Okay, so there's my first stitch, and I'm gonna make a, another stitch right on top of that first stitch, okay? and then pull it all the way through and that's going to give it, you know, a nice tight uh, fix. So, and then I'm just gonna keep doing that. You'll notice I've sped this up because this would be really boring to watch in real time. And in fact, I'm not even going to show you all of it. I just wanted to show you enough so that you could understand what I was doing. I'm simply just going across. And the stitches don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be right next to each other or anything like that. But you know, you want them close enough that nothing's going to uh, leak out, especially since I'm using rice. I certainly don't want it trailing rice everywhere. And so I'm just gonna do that until I get all the way to the end of the gap. And Fabricadabra, here is our finished product. This is my little bean bag doorstop. It's in the shape of a kind of a pyramid. And here's a picture of it uh, at the door at my house. 
Thank you for watching and happy sewing.